We're going to be doing the Eastern Cape Grade 12 uh, September 2013 paper for Information Technology or IT. We're going to be doing paper 1. Now question 1 of an IT paper 1 uh, paper is normally SQL or working with databases. So here we've got our question, we've got a school database, this is our scenario and obviously in the school database we've got some a children's table and a parents table um, there we can see the details of the children's table there we can see we've got some true or false fields some gender with m and f and so on you can never see it, those fields and if we move further down we can see the parents uh, table of the uh, parents tb and we can see the detail that is available in that table so let's head straight away to our question number one let's go down or read through all that now we must complete the code for the classes button um, and we have to display all the information of the children, so we need to display all the children information um, in the class to produce a class list in alphabetical order. So that seems like a quite an easy one to start off with. So we're going to go to the class lists, and there we go. We're going to write our code right over here in between the text, and we're going to obviously select. They want us to select everything, so we can say select star, and we want to get this all from the children database or table. So that's TB. And, but we want it in alphabetical order, and if you read carefully, be careful, make sure you read the question carefully, it says alphabetical order according to the names. And looking at this example, you can see the surnames are not sorted, but the names are sorted. So that is why when we go to our example, we must actually do an order by the field which has the name. And if you double check here, you can see that that field is called name. So that's quite easy, so I put in name, and hopefully that should work, so we just run it. And run the class list and there we've got our data it looks very similar to the data that's in the example that is shown now for question 1.2 this is for the allergies and cooking button and we have to display all the children's name and just the name so that's the only thing we have to display uh, only those who have an allergy and who are doing the cooking is fun activity so let's just go look at how we can find that information in the table if I go right up to the children's table I can actually probably just look here you can see allergies is a true or false field, so we obviously want where they have an allergy, so we want that to be true. And the extra activities must be cooking is fun. But if you look at it, you see cooking fun, it can be by itself, but it could also be combined with other activities. So we can't always assume that it's going to be just cooking is fun in extra activities. So we must look for any time when cooking is fun is somewhere inside this field. So I'm not going to do a straight equal to, I'm going to look at a, a like, using a like in the scenario. So let's go to the question, let's go to our code, allergies, so we need to select just the name, so that's selecting the name part, and we're selecting this information obviously from the children, TB, where, now this is where our conditions come in, now our first condition, if you remember correctly, was allergies, now make sure you spell it correctly, I'm going to double just double check my spelling, you must spell it exactly the same as what it is in the table, there we go, so it looks like I'm on the right track, and allergies must be true so we must make that equal to true and at the same time extra activities let's just double check that I spelled it correctly extra activities that looks like it's okay now we would be tempted to just go equals cooking is fun spell it right is fun we could do it just like that but that would only find the case where it's only cooking is fun we want cooking to be found anywhere in that extra activities field so we can't do the equal to we've got to use the like and then before the cooking is fine we need a percentage sign for anything before cooking is fun but we also need it after because we don't know if there's going to be data where cooking is fun starts with starts with the word cooking is fun and there's data after it so let's have a run and see if it works and there we go, we've got the one name of the one person, which I think is the answer that they're looking for. And there we go, easy four marks. Now let's go into 1.3. In this question, we've got to work out the ages, or in the ages button, we've got to formulate the SQL that's going to display the ages of the children. Now in our database, we don't have their age, but we do have their date of birth. Now this is quite an interesting question because the way that they do it in the actual memo from the department is actually quite um, not not the way I would generally do an age question. Um, so I'll show you what they did and then I'll show you some other ways of doing it which will probably be more accurate. So for the age field you basically want to find out the age so we just want the name and the age of the child and this age is going to be a calculated field and they tell you that there. So we have to do some sort of calculation 
and we just say all the current jobs. There's no um, specification, there's no DEET or WHERE clause, so there's no uh, criteria, it's just all the children's names with their age. So if we go to the question, we're going to obviously go select the name of the child, so we select name. Then we're going to get this other information which is going to be our ages field. So we're going to do some sort of calculation. Now, the way they did it in the department, from the department um, memo, is they just took the current date, which in this year was 2013, and they minused what the year was in the date of birth of the child. And to get just the year from that date field is you use, use the year function. So we know that the field's name for the date of birth, I think it is called date of birth, one word, there we go. So that date of birth, I can simply write year, date of of birth. So that will return the year from that date of birth field because that is a data field and that we will return this whole thing, this whole calculation, we're going to make this return as a we're going to give it a name for a field as age. And all of this is going to be from the children table. Now if we run that, let's, we should get similar results to what they've got. Hopefully it all works. And there we go. We've got our results. Now the reason why I don't like the way they've done it is because 2013 means this query will only work for this year. So a better version of this would probably be to take not just 2013 but take today's year or this year's year, sorry. So the year that we're in at currently. So if I run this query next year, it'll still give me the correct results. So to do that, there's a now function which is what is the date that is currently on the computer system and then I don't obviously want the whole date I just need the year of it so year of now minus the year of the date of birth so if I run that it should give us pretty much the same results so it gives us the same results um, but that only gives us the age of the child for if she's turning that that age in this year. It, it might, doesn't necessarily mean she is that age or he or she is that age yet because maybe their birthday hasn't occurred yet. Um, some other ways that some people probably do is they do like a calculation where they work out how many days um, are left. So they'll take now which will return a, a, like a date. If you do mathematical functions on dates that returns the number of days that is difference between those two. So if I take to the, today's date and I minus the date that they were born, it would tell me how many ba days that that person has been born, and then I can take that combined answer and divide it by 365, and that would tell me an average of what the, the year should be. If I run that, you'll get decimal numbers, um, and you can obviously round that and so on. But yeah, for example, Sarah, you can see she hasn't actually turned four yet. But with the previous examples, it said that she had turned four, well, she is four in this year. But according to this calculation, she actually hasn't turned four as of yet. So this is another way of doing that calculation. Moving on to question 1.4. Now here we've got a question where we've got to work out all the details of the parents or the parents' names of who can assist and if we remember, if you go up to our fields, our tables, the parents table has an available to help field, which is true or false. Um, so we obviously want those that are available. But in our query, we not only want the dad's name and the mom's name, but we also want the child's name. And that's where this child ID is going to come into play, because that child ID is linked to the child ID in this table. So we actually need to use both tables. So that's what we need. So we're going to go right down to this question, just excuse the scrolling let's go down here so we want the name the dad's name and the mom's name from both the tables so we are using both tables so straight away we know we're gonna to have to make sure that we specify which table we're getting which information from and in our where clause we need to specify and you do this every time you're using two tables you need to specify what is the link between the two tables and in our case our children's table children's TB has a child ID which is exactly the same as the child ID in the parents table. So let's have a look at that. Let's go to the parents assistance and we're going to select the name of the child. Now it's probably a bit a good idea to say children TB dot name so we know which table it's coming from. That comma and we need to get the dad's name. Now how do they specify dad underscore name? So let's do that. So that's from the parents tb dot dad underscore name. And also we've got parents tb dot 
mom underscore name. I think that's right. Is it a mom name? Yes. And also, let me just double check. Did I, is it parent TB or parents? Little things like that can can really mess around in your code. And if you just double check, it's parents TB. There they've told us. So I know it's um, on the right track. So I'm okay with that. Again, I apologize for the scrolling. Hope I'm not making you too busy. So here we go. Let's go to the code again. And we want it from which tables? We want it from both tables. So we want it from the children TB, comma the parents with an S TB. Where now, as I said, the moment you are using two tables, you straight away before you even look at the other criteria, always put in that criteria that joins the two tables together. And we know that in children TB there is a child RD which is exactly the same as what is the link between the two tables because in children TB that is the primary key in the parents TB it is the foreign key they don't necessarily always have to have the same name they could have different names they're not necessarily always going to be the primary key of the one with the primary key of the other it's just going to be whatever the data is in this table that links to the data in the other table so we've got our joining criteria and then the other criteria at the same time is we want to know if they are available to help and we know there's an available to help field now I could say parents TB dot available to help I'm gonna try without it sometimes if there's a field that's only in the one table it's, it's okay just to leave out the parents TB dot part and we want where that is a true because we want to know all those that are available to help so let's see how that works. Hopefully it works. Parents assistance. And there we go. And if I look at my data, it looks very similar to what I need for my question. Okay, we're going to go to part two of the video where we go through the other four questions. And let's see how it goes from there.